right now on KNBC 9 News at 10. Tonight, people across Louisiana are being warned not to let their guard down as Tropical Storm Barry continues to weaken. We continue to track the storm. Millions of dollars in flood damage, thousands of families in Missouri are learning how they can get financial help. Power outage in New York City. Right now, tens of thousands of people have no lights and no air conditioning in the country's largest city. How it all started. We begin with that breaking news. We have live looks right now at New York City. Power still out to parts of the Big Apple. A power outage left businesses without electricity, subway cars stalled, elevators stuck in high rises. A transformer fire caused the blackout, which affects at least 42,000 customers. Tonight's outage comes on the 32nd anniversary of the New York City blackout. And we also have live pictures right now from Louisiana. It looks calm for now, but rain from Tropical Storm Barry could still cause disastrous flooding. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Rachel Sanchi and for Emily Welsh, Hurricane Barry rolled into Louisiana, dumping heavy rains and flooding highways. It quickly weakened, but not enough to prevent it from breaching at least three levees. ABC's Elizabeth Herr reports from New Orleans. Barry making landfall, slamming into the central Louisiana coast as a Category 1 hurricane. I also want to caution everybody, this is just the beginning. I ask everyone to stay vigilant. The storm now no longer a hurricane, but authorities warning it is on the move, still packing punishing winds and torrential downpours. Morgan City hard hit with Barry uprooting trees, damaging homes and property and at its peak, leaving the city totally in the dark. The system's so fragile right now. Utility director made a decision just to shut the city down. Mm. So we're 100 percent out of electricity at this point. In Terrebonne Parish, a levee there overtopped by the rising water. These horses now rescued after becoming stranded. I saw how deep the water was on there almost to their necks. The water's still rising, so we knew we had to get them out. This levee in Myrtle Grove also overtopped, but according to officials, not a single levee along the Mississippi River has failed. In New Orleans, for the first time in history, all of the city's floodgates were closed ahead of the storm. It's been cool, it's been a little breezy, a little spattering of rain yesterday, but not enough to mount to anything. Some residents now breathing a sigh of relief, but the mayor stressing the danger isn't over yet. We are not in any way out of the woods. The walk along the Mississippi River in the French Quarter remains closed for safety. First Alert Meteorologist Pete Grigsby is here and you've been tracking the storm. Yeah, Barry has uh, weakened. That's good news, but the flooding concern is the biggest concern down there. And of course, for us, it may affect us down the road, especially come Monday and Tuesday. But in the meantime, look at all the heavy rainfall along the coastal areas of uh, uh, Louisiana, over the eastern coast of area of Texas even down to areas like Mississippi. Now, quite a bit of rainfall with a storm that's only moving eight miles an hour to the north northwest direction, and that is also causing uh, greater concerns when it comes to flooding. Uh, but eventually it is going to move northward and move into our region where it's going to produce a cloud cover and a little bit of rainfall for us. But right now, the tropical storm warnings continue for a tropical storm as it continues to slowly move farther inland. Now, how much rain are they going to get? It's it's unbelievable. 20 to 25 inches along the coastal areas around the New Orleans over to Baton Rouge, and then it starts to taper off a bit as they go a little farther north. Now here in Kansas City, it's been really quiet. Yes, the heat and humidity in place, but we're down to 82 degrees. Quiet, clear conditions that will continue through tomorrow, but changes are on the way and even hotter conditions next week. Nine day forecast and more straight ahead. All right, thanks so much, Pete. Millions of dollars in damage caused by flooding along the Missouri River since March. That damage is still being evaluated in areas across the state. Disaster response teams from FEMA went door to door in Missouri today, telling people in flooded damaged areas how to apply for assistance. KBC 9's Brian Johnson is in one of the hardest hit parts of Buchanan County where people were evacuated for weeks. This right here would be the high water mark of the first flood. Then you can see the water as it goes down. This was the high water mark of the second flood. Twice water forced the Farrell family out of their home. Each time they couldn't get back for weeks. Just got back in. We've been living in the camper that's out there. Many homes on the street are gutted. The dumpster is full. The Farrells work with insurance making repairs, new carpet, sheetrock and trim, but it doesn't cover everything. The number one thing for us is the time out of our house. 
the flood insurance doesn't really give you money to cover rent if you had to rent a place or stay in a hotel, and we stayed in campgrounds with our camper. At the fire station in Lewis and Clark Village, FEMA representatives answer questions and encourage people to apply, saying there's lots of programs to help in different situations. FEMA, one of the adjusters, came by today, and is, I think the process is just getting started. Jesse Farrell has applied. This disaster declaration only covers damage beginning in late April. So he's not sure how to get help from the flood in March. Hopefully they'll be able to help us out because the first one was the worst one. It was the one that did the more damage. Hi, he's hopeful, saying people in this town know it floods, and when it does, they band together, which is why people stay. And that's why even if it floods again, we'll still be back. In Buchanan County, Brian Johnson, KMBC 9 News. Now, if you do have severe damage from spring storms or flooding dating back to April, you can now apply for FEMA assistance. President Trump approved the disaster declaration request this week. You can apply online at disasterassistance.gov or call the number on your screen. The money will go to these 20 counties, including Jackson and Lafayette in our area. A motorcyclist rider was killed today when his Harley Davidson crashed into a building. This happened just before 3 o'clock this afternoon at 80th Street and MLK. Police say the motorcyclist was going north on MLK when the rider lost control and he died at the hospital. Missouri Governor Mike Parson vetoed one bill that would have allowed some motorcycle riders to drive without helmets. The legislation would have repealed Missouri's helmet requirement for motorcycle riders who are at least 18 years old and have health insurance. Parson said he vetoed the wide ranging bill because of an unrelated section that dealt with suspending driver's license if court fines were not paid. Well, I-70 at Broadway back open tonight. It was closed this morning after a tractor trailer truck carrying produce flipped over and spilled tomatoes and squash all over the roadway. The driver got away with just some minor injuries. No word yet on the cause. The KBI has issued a statewide silver alert for a missing McPherson woman. 65 year old Cheryl Joy Scohan was last seen on Thursday evening leaving the VFW. Cheryl's in need of medication. If you see her or know anything, call 911. Calls tonight for the humane treatment of migrants held in border detention facilities. ABC's Trevor Alt reports protests are growing as ICE raids are expected to take place soon. Free the kids now! In cities across the country, protesters taking to the streets ahead of this weekend's ICE raids. Watch over those who live in constant fear that those flashing police lights are meant for them. The president removing any mystery about the timing of the raids. It starts on Sunday and they're going to take people out and they're going to bring them back to their countries. ICE could target as many as 2,000 migrants on immediate deportation lists. Ahead of those raids, Vice President Pence toured an all-male adult detention center in Texas on Friday run by border officials. I couldn't be more impressed with the compassionate work that our Customs and Border Protection are doing here at this facility. For the first time, our news cameras allowed inside the detention centers to document conditions during the vice president's visit. The men in chain link pens with Mylar blankets to help them stay warm. We are not a terrorist. The vice president believing Democratic members of Congress have exaggerated the poor conditions they saw at a different facility. The time has come to stop the irresponsible rhetoric about the way that people are being cared for and treated who are being detained in our facilities. But those Democrats standing by what they say they witnessed, some fighting back tears during testimony. Imagine traveling thousands of miles in grueling and dangerous conditions because you have no other option only to be separated from your family. Overcrowding and unsanitary conditions inside the facilities have also been documented by the Inspector General of President Trump's own Homeland Security Department. Members of a local group say that they're ready just in case federal sweeps are not expected in Kansas City this weekend, but lawyers are warning families to be ready to know their rights. A bilingual hotline will be ready tomorrow in case those crackdowns do happen here. You can call this number 913-210-5353. A local pet therapy program hosted a fundraiser today in Overland Park. Paws for a Cause wrapped up this evening. The event benefited Sadie Paws, a program that provides emotional support for senior, citizens, senior centers, nursing homes, and hospitals. The nonprofit is named after its founder's own therapy dog. She started it after an accident of her own. Sadie would literally get under my arm and move her head, you know, making me pet her. And that was one of the mo motions that I needed for physical therapy. And from that, it just grew. And what she did for me is lit a fire in me when I had given up. And so she had something so special that I wanted to share it with others. And so that's what inspired Sadie Paul's mission. 
Sadie Paz is also a part of these Shawnee Mission schools Yay! working with special High needs five. students. Yeah. Well, KBC wants everyone to roll up their sleeves and help Kansas City. The Pint for a Pint Community Blood Drive kicks off on Tuesday. We'll be holding blood drives with the Community Blood Center at some local Volkswagen dealerships. You can get a free pint of Bluebell ice cream for donating blood. You can make an appointment to donate on our website, kmbc.com. Just check out our community page. And on a Saturday night, we kind of close out this heated afternoon with a high of 89. That's only one degree above the normal 88. Didn't get close to records, but next week it's going to get even hotter. More about that in our nine day forecast coming up. Plus, we continue to monitor the impact of Hurricane Barry on the Gulf Coast. New video is now coming into our newsroom of the aftermath. And a plane crashes into a community center, sending burning pieces into a public swimming pool. And tonight, the effort to raise money for a four year old Kansas City girl, the challenges she faces every day, and the surgery that could help her.